here we go. Okay, hello everyone, and thanks for being uh, with me and Greg Veltri today. So my name is Andrea Valle, I'm Product Manager uh, at the Novo Software, and today we will, uh, we will focus on pre-processing in high-dimensional data analysis. And as I say today with me online, uh, we have Greg Veltri, um, uh, who will help me in answering your question in real time. So feel free to type in any question you want in the question section. Before starting with the actual topics of today, I want to summarize a little bit what we have done in the preview, previous um, sessions of this educational series of webinar on data preprocessing. So today we will focus on data cleaning and merging. You see uh, section five and six in this list. What we have done in the uh, last couple of months was focusing on the concept of high dimensional data analysis and pipelines, the concept of three very important and very popular pre processing uh, steps that are scaling, normalization, and downsampling. I strongly suggest you to go back if you didn't yet, go back on our YouTube channel and watch or rewatch re those uh, sections. You see they last usually like 30 minutes, uh, minutes more, minutes less, uh, and they really give you the basics for what we are going to do today. So even if you have didn't watch them, feel free to stay here, of course, uh, and then you can go back and watch them um, later. So what we've done again was, you see here, introduction to pipeline. What we've, what we've seen together was why we need high dimensional data analysis and how to approach this new uh, field, probably new field uh, for most of us, right? Uh, we are cytometrists, first of all, and data analysis, it's really something new. So first of all, keep in mind that data analysis, it's, um, it's a technique. It's a technique like, flow cytometry, it's a technique like painting, it's a technique like imaging, skiing, swimming, and whatever. So take your time, okay? And don't uh, think to like master and learn this in like uh, one after afternoon. Take your time and uh, watch webinar, read papers, and navigate on the, on the, um, on the video, ask your bioinformatician, send us an email, and so on. Then we saw scaling, normalization, downsampling. Uh, we focus on those three to start dealing with pre-processing. Pre-processing again is the uh, what we do to prepare the data before running the cool algorithms. Okay, the cool algorithms can be like UMAP, TSNI, FlowSAM, Phenograph, and so on. So those are the those are all steps that. Um, prepare the data to be analyzed by either clustering or dimensionality reduction. Scaling, it's really, really important, really important. So feel free to go back and watch that video like three times. Um, we will also speak a little bit about scaling later on. Normalization is um, sometimes it's really uh, useful. Sometimes it's a little bit risky. Okay, so there are pros and cons about data normalization. Downsampling, most of the time, it's done to speed up the calculation, but there are type of downsampling in FCS Express that are called density-dependent downsampling that allows you also to improve the data because they um, allows you to enrich in rare events. And today we will uh, focus on data cleaning and data mer merging. So with today, we will conclude this educational series of webinars on pre-processing. And after this, how our data will be ready to be processed by Disney, UMAP, uh, FlowSAM, Optimized Disney, Phenograph, Spade, K-Means, and whatever you want. So let's start with data cleaning. So why we need to clean the data? Mainly because of two reasons. So we have two, let's say, different uh, reasons to clean the data. So the first one is removing um, specific population that we can actually recognize and that we don't want. Okay, for example, like dead cells, the breeze, um, 
Maybe you want to focus on monocyte and you want to remove lymphocytes, maybe the opposite. Maybe you want to focus on neutrophils and you want to remove everything else. Um, this type of data cleaning, it's something that we usually do with gating. Okay, so you draw gates on a population of interest, on another population of interest, you remove these, you remove that. So, because it's something that we can recognize. The second type of data cleaning, it's much harder to uh, be uh, performed manually by us. And it's the type of data cleaning that aims to remove acquisition, uh, bad events that have been acquired during acquisition. So, you know that it might happen that uh, during the acquisition, uh, like bad events can can occur. For example, because of like bubble in the fluidic or like um, sudden changes in the in the speed, or because of some clog. I mean, a lot of stuff. And when that happens, the fluidic is unstable, and the numbers, the value that the instrument records are not really reliable. Like. It can also happen that uh, an event which is negative, it's recorded in the FCS file as a positive, okay, just because of this issue, or maybe a positive which become a negative. Uh, you might see very, very, very large values or very, very low values of fluorescences. Well, those are all uh, artifacts, and it's really hard to remove them. Okay, uh, I see some some someone usually open like a plot with the time on the x-axis and then try to guess which are the bad region to remove manually. But it's time consuming, it's error prone, it's not reproducible. So this is the part of data cleaning that we usually uh, perform with algorithm. And there are two algorithms uh, embedded in FCS Express, Flow AI and Flow CAD. They are really, really popular. Um, None of them can be, uh, let's say, considered the uh, ultimate or the gold standard. My suggestion is try both and see uh, which one work better for you. Um, we will not go into much detail in how they work, okay? But and anyway, both of them try to remove those artifacts, okay? Like because of fluidic issue or uh, all those all those uh, scenarios, uh, they are doing that in a different way uh, from the mathematical point of view but the focus uh, today will be how to integrate any of them in your pipeline okay for the detail about how they work what they do really like signal acquisition uh, uh, cleaning or flow rate cleaning or magic cleaning in flow cut whatever feel free to go back to the original manuscript or uh, it's really well explained on our user manual or on our video uh, in the webinar page. So how to add any of them, FlowAR or FlowCAT, in our pipeline? First of all, let's review, uh, as, as I told you before, let's review what we've done last time. So last time we spoke about gating, scaling, and non-sampling mainly. And what you see here, it's... Um, it's a prototypical pipeline for high dimensional data analysis. Okay. So you start with the gating, then you scale the, the gated data, and then you downsample the scaled gated data. Why in this order? And this is the first important concept because so far we just spoke about scaling, gating, normalization, downsampling, but the order really matters. And indeed, here today, we are here asking ourselves where I should add the cleaning step. So just to give you some idea, why? putting the scaling after as a second step in the gating, uh, in the pipeline, after the gating. Well, because especially if you are using um, scale that allow you to automatically define the best transition point, for example, the exponential scale in FCS, in FCS Express. And again, we uh, look at this very clearly in the um, scaling webinar. Especially if you're dealing with a scale like this, you want the algorithm to find the best uh, transition point for the data of interest, so for the population of interest. So you first gate, let's say on lymphocyte, and then you run the scaling so that the scaling will be uh, specifically tuned on the lymphocyte population, which is the population of interest. So scaling come downstream. What about the downsampling? Well, in that case, it really depends on the type of downsampling. 
So we spoke about interval sampling, random sampling, density dependent on sampling during the downsampling webinar. Um, if you run an interval or a random sampling, basically you can run down sampling either upstream or downstream the scaling. If you run a density dependent on sampling, well, density dependent on sampling heavily rely on the scaling. So in that case, you must run the down the downsampling um, downstream the scaling. Okay. And why downsampling after the gating? Well, because usually you want to, for example, downsample 1 million of events within lymphocytes. So first you should subset to lymphocyte and then you should uh, sample 1 million of events within the lymphocyte. So this is a prototypical, very basic pre-processing pipeline. Okay. At the end of this pipeline, we have gated, scaled, downsampled events and parameters. So where in this pipeline we should put our cleaning step. Okay, either flow AI or flow cat, for example. And again, the overall idea uh, for me today with you, it's uh, giving you some guidelines on how to solve problem and to answer question when you will be there alone, creating your own pipeline. So you are here, you have a pipeline in FCS Express with the gating, scaling, and downsampling, and you want to add FlowCat and FlowAI. So where should, put, where should we put them? Like at the top, or maybe between gating and scaling, or between scaling and downsampling? Now, the answer is, it depends on the algorithm. It really depends on how the author of those algorithms uh, create them. So for example, for the FlowCat you see on the left, FlowCat is supposed to be run on compensated and scaled. So we, and we will do it together, uh, practically in FCS Express in a second. So we have to add a scaling step upstream FlowCat because FlowCat won't scale data, okay? What about FlowAI? FlowAI, it's completely the opposite. FlowCat is supposed to be run on, un, sorry, FlowAI at the right. Uh, FlowAI, it's completely uh, the opposite in terms of input, okay, as compared to FlowCat. FlowAI at the right is supposed to be run on uncompensated, unscaled data. So, so it should be the very first step at the top of the pipeline. How I found this? Well, you need to write to, to read the original article or you can send us an email. Um, for the FlowCat was actually, um, was actually interesting since the actual paper was not really mentioning uh, which input was supposed to be used. So I just wrote uh, Ryan and Justin and they immediately reply me in like five minutes. So feel free also to, to touch base with, with the author of any algorithm you are interested in. Uh, they are usually always super happy to share their, their knowledge and their experience. But otherwise, feel free to uh, write us also directly. So uh, let's create these two pipeline, okay, in FCS Express. So imagine to do it on your own with your data. So let's start with the uh, FlowCat pipeline. Okay, let me close here. So this is a blank page in FCS Express. Um, I will start by inserting a plot. Okay, and I will open one of my files. It's a single individual FCS file that I load as an individual FCS file, of course. Okay, for a scatter size scatter, and we are creating a pipeline. So we will have flow cut, we will have gating, scaling, and downsampling. It's a pre-processing pipeline. Um, let's start by creating a gate of interest. The gate of interest, it's really up to you, okay? In this case, I will just draw a gate on this population. I will call it cells, nothing crazy. Okay, so tools, transformation, you already know this because I know you went through the pipeline webinar. We create the pipeline, okay? No gate here selected, okay? So the input for this pipeline, okay? The first step will work on all events and I want all the parameters to be selected here. 
Okay, so remember here, we want to start with Flowcat and we need a scaling step to scale data for Flowcat. Then we add gating, scaling, downsampling. Now I want to show you that since we know actually that Flowcat requires scale data, if you add Flowcat, Flowcat will automatically come with a scaling step directly embedded in this mini pipeline. Okay, so in this case, let me go back here. If in FCS Express, if you add Flowcat, you will automatically have a scaling step there, okay, that you can use for Flowcat. Let's use it. So I will select my fluorescence parameter. I will scale the data in a way that I know it's correct for my files, okay? Feel free to go back to the scaling webinar to go more into this. The first step of uh, Flowcat is called load time density. Uh, it really relies only on the flow rate. So how many events have been acquired per second? It doesn't require you to select any parameter. The second step is called magic number downsampling. This is the one that checks the stability, not in terms of flow rate, but the stability in terms of signal. So in this case, you need to select the parameter that you want to quality control. And this is the point in which we select the scale data. So those CD3 FATC scaled, CD1656 bit scaled, and so on, those are generated by this step. Okay, if I want to be uh, really clear, I can say scaled for flow cut. Okay, so those will be called CD3 FATC scaled for flow cut if you want to be really uh, clear. And you see I'm indeed selecting them. Right? Then in the last, sorry here, in the last step of this flow cut mini pipeline, we automatically added in FCS Express a step called parameter removal. This is to remove parameter so that those parameters, which is really useful only for flow cut, okay, will no longer be visible downstream. Otherwise, you know, a lot of steps will generate a lot of parameter. And at the end of the pipeline, you might have like 60 parameters, okay? And maybe you don't need them. Maybe you just need like QMAP one and two. So this is a good way to make the list shorter. So after the magic number downsampling, Flowcut in this case will remove from the list. And it's fine removing them here because they have been already used upstream. Okay, uh, what else here? So pipeline, now, we can create our gating. So we clean the events, we clean all events. I don't want to bias Flowcat by applying a gate before Flowcat. Now I can add a gating downsampling. You see, now I can say gate on cells. So the gate cells will be applied on the cleaned data set because it's downstream Flowcat. Then I can add another scaling step Okay, this scaling step will scale the parameter of interest in the way I want. And the idea here is that this scaling will be, will be applied to the gated population. Okay, the difference between this scaling and this one within Flowcat is that the scaling at the top will scale all events, while this one will only and precisely scale the, the events of interest, the events within the cells here, the cells gate. In your case, it might be called like T cells or my population or anything you want. Okay, last but not least, we want to add a downsampling. In this file, we don't really need a downsampling actually because it's really small, but in your case, you might deal with big data. So feel free to add the downsampling here. Again, what we say before was, if this is interval or random sampling, doesn't really change much if you put it here. So downstream the scaling or between the gate and the scaling. Okay, because interval sampling and random sampling do not rely on the scaling. Okay. If instead you want to use either target density or weighted density downsampling, they heavily rely, they are heavily dependent on the scaling. Okay, because in that case, the enrichment of rare events is based on the density and the density rely on the scaling. So if you want to use target density or weighted density, put the downsampling after the scaling, okay, downstream the scaling. 
And in that case, the input for that downsampling will be the scaled parameter. In this case, again, you can put it here, you can put it between gating and scaling, that's fine. Okay, so if now I open a plot and I apply in this pipeline, this pipeline will be immediately run. It's a very like small file, it takes like a fraction of a second. What you see here, you see, is the resulting um, data set. So you see the original parameters, the scale parameters, and basically that's it. You just see less event because we have a downsampling. Okay, this is for flow cut. So let me, we might go back here, flow cut. And I will save on my desktop. Okay, we might want to get back here later on. Okay, now for those of you who want to also try Flow AI, so let me open a new layout and let me open again one plot, same data file. Now I will start by creating my gate and then you immediately realize that in this case, how can we access uncompensated data? You see here, Flowcat want uncompensated data, which is really, it's really strange in flow cytometry. Okay, we spend so much, so much effort and uh, sample and antibody to uh, create proper proper compensation control to calculate the compensation and so on, and now Flow AI want uncompensated data. So it's so uncommon dealing with uncompensated data that basically FCS Express automatically apply the compensation by default. Okay, how can we overcome this issue? So you see, if I open a plot, you will see that those are compensated data like those two. Okay, how can I overcome this issue? If you go to file options, oh, sorry, file info, layout options, Okay, you can manipulate the options specific for this layout, okay, only in this layout. One of the options is how to handle compensation, uh, basically how to handle compensated and non-compensated parameter. By default, this, you see, it's set to overwrite uncompensated parameter. This is just a fancy wording. Uh, this means, and it's the default, this means that what you see in FCS Express, in this case, you see the plot, the plot title says compensated. So any parameter that you see in that plot are compensated. Of course, it might be a good compensation, bad compensation, but those are compensated parameters. What about if I change these to append to data after uncompensated parameters? So this means show me both, show me compensated and uncompensated parameters so that they can, I can choose which one to use. I click OK, so click on append to data after an uncompensated parameter, click OK. Nothing happened really because this plot, this file was already loaded. So go to data, the data tab at the top and click on refresh. And that's enough. Now you don't need to do it with all the files, okay? Only if, if a file was already loaded, you need to do a data refresh. And now you see that here I have access to all parameters uncompensated and all parameters compensated. Okay, the compensated have a suffix uh, that says comp. So for example, now I can go back to CD4 comp, CD8 comp. Now you see it's clear that these are the compensation. Okay, you go to tools, transformation. Now we create the pipeline pipeline and you might say why here I cannot see the compensated parameter well there is a trick from this drop down menu select template from selected plot so whatever you see in that plot any list of parameter will be used here this is what I want I want to access both compensated and non-compensated the non-compensated parameter will only be used for flow AI Okay, I can start with Flow AI. Okay, and guess we have a flow rate, the check, the stability in terms of 
number of events per second. We have a signal acquisition that check the stability of the signal. In this case, we need to select parameters. And what I want is precisely selecting all the non-compensated parameters. Then we have another called dynamic range. This is to remove outlier in the lower and in the, in the upper border. Uh, again, we need to check the uncompensated. And that's it. Okay, this is flow AI. And then I can move on and add, as we did before, a gate down sampling. I want to gate on cells. This gate will be applied on the cleaned data. Then I want to add um, scaling. Okay, which data, which parameter I want to scale? Well, the compensation. Sorry, the compensated data. Of course, I want to work with the compensated data later, later on. And finally, a downsampling. Okay, if I want to see how it how it looks, I can apply it. Flyer so will be run. The gate will be applied. Scaling will be run. Downsampling will be applied. So what you see here are 1,000 scaled, gated, cleaned data. Okay, again we might want to go back here. So let me type. Flow AI on my desktop. Sorry, Flow AI. Okay. Now you know how to integrate Flow AI and FlowCat in your pipeline, pre processing pipeline. Practical example is exactly what we've done. So sorry for this blank slide. Conclusion. So data cleaning are especially good as an example of steps, pipeline steps, that require you to really ask yourself, where should I put it? Where should I run Flow AI? Where should I run FlowCat? Which should be the input for Flow AI? Which should be input for FlowCat? But actually, this, this question about at which so where within the pipeline should I run scaling, downsampling, and uh, and gating and whatever? It's always um, a good question to ask. Then uh, there are different data cleaning uh, steps. We might have more in the data cleaning algorithms. We might have more in the future. So again, don't give for granted that they all work on the same input data because this really depends on what the out what the author did when they create the algorithms. If you are in doubt, again, you have us, the Denovo software team, uh, you can refer to our user manual, which is really complete and detailed. Uh, you can watch a video, exactly as the one that we are recording here, and then you can read the uh, manuscript or also reach out the, the author. Okay, so with this, I want to conclude this data cleaning part. Now we're moving on the data merging part and you will see that all the pieces will uh, 